everyone, it's Katie from So Old Fashioned and today I'm going to introduce you to Nelly, who likes to live in a box. Nelly is my singer 201P, which makes her an Australian singer, which is why my parents called her Nelly after Dame Nelly Melba, the famous Australian opera singer. P stands for Penrith, which is a factory in New South Wales. I did try and find some pictures of it, but they were incredibly bad quality. So just imagine a sort of really fancy, streamlined, late 50s factory, and you'll, you'll be able to imagine where Nelly was made. Well, she was assembled there. She wasn't made per se, but the box that she is contained within was assembled in Australia. So we have these quite unique Australian design boxes with latches on the sides to seal them in and we have these awesome handles as well This is not native to Nelly. She came without a handle But this was salvaged from another box and my dad attached it for me as anyone who has a vintage sewing machine knows you do not Carry the case by the handle the handle is purely there for lifting the lid off which we will do in a minute. Nelly was born in 1958 I'm lucky that I know quite a bit about her and who she belonged to because my mum bought her because she was looking for a box, a base, to put one of her other machines in and she kept trying to buy these non-functioning machines so she could take the machine out use the box and they all turned out to be uh, machines that were just temporarily non-working and she kept fixing them up and when she showed me this one I thought that would be a very nice machine to have in the background of my videos occasionally so I asked if I could have the head when she took the box and she's like yes that's fine because it doesn't work so what does it matter but it turns out Nelly does work in all likelihood what happened was that her capacitor the suppressor in her foot pedal just died and when that happens the machines just run by themselves and she just got all chucked up with threads inside and just wouldn't work so my parents cleaned her out and <laughs> she works perfectly because she's a singer and it's very hard to kill them really and she was very well looked after she belonged to a lady called Pat and she bought it as a wedding present from a country show apparently in 1958 which is pretty much as soon as it was made to be honest the publication date on her instruction manual says 1958 she will be 60 next year and she's brilliant she's working very very well Pat looked after this machine she used it and when she was unable to keep using it she still had it with her because she loved it and she enjoyed using it when she was able to but she has now gone into assisted living and a friend sold the machine for her so my parents are still in touch with the lady from whom they bought the machine and she's obviously still in touch with Pat I sent her a photo of the skirt that I made using this machine so Pat knows that someone else now has it and is enjoying it and loves looking after it and using it it's not as easy to use as my 30 year old Benina but it's a lot of fun to use to take it out every now and then and give it a shot because uh, I may have mentioned this many, many times, but it has really nice stitches. And what more do you want from a machine? So I will take you through some of the things that are a bit different in an old machine. But really that's not very much. You can happily use an old machine if you know how to use any sewing machine because they don't change very much. <laughs> so this is Nelly's Australian made box. As you can see it has this sort of interesting curve to it and it's covered in veneer which is peeling off a little bit um, because well she is almost 60 years old bits are allowed to peel off at this stage and it just these little flaps on the side little clips that allow us to reveal all so she has the classic aluminium 201 series and she's in this sort of two-tone brown which is very nice and we will now focus a little closer and I'll show you some of the details which have changed very little from this to more modern machines. So we start with our spool for our cotton and obviously it's pretty standard it just sort of threads from there through tension I will show you this more in more detail in a second and you have your little tension adjustment here and everything it just looks all the same you can adjust the pressure of your foot here and the only thing to remember with machines from this era is they don't thread front to back. They thread either left to right or right to left. And in this case, it's a right to left, which is apparently um, not common for singers around this era. It was a change in the, the 201s. Over here we have our spool for threading the bobbin and the 
bobbin is threaded here with this little this little wheel here it connects to the main wheel here and spins you up a bobbin. I have threaded a bobbin on it and the thing you find is that it occasionally jumps off the little tension wheel here and there is another way I've seen of threading it leaving your cotton there so there's there are ways around everything and people know everything on YouTube and this is obviously your stitch length now the only thing you can do is change the stitch length and go backwards and forwards and if you needed to do anything else there was an attachment for it there's an attachment for everything if you wanted to do zigzag there's a zigzag attachment those are very rare <laughs> very difficult to find those now um, what is more common is the, the buttonhole attachment. I have two of those, both of which should work on this. And that basically creates amazing buttonholes for you. Supposedly, I'm going to test that at some point. I will do a video on it. That should be a lot of fun. I'd like to see how that goes because I hate doing buttonholes on one machine. So they're just not nice. We will now do a bit of a, a close-up on our stitch length and our reverse mechanism. Because that's a tiny, tiny little change that you will have to get used to there. Okay, our stitch length adjuster is very clever. Your smaller stitches are up here at the 30 and your larger stitches are down here at 6. I have mine set on about 10, it just does a very nice size at 10. But to adjust it, what you do need to remember is to adjust this knob as well. So if I wanted to change to a basting stitch at 6, I just unscrew this little thing here and sort of slide it down to the bottom of this sort of uh, curved groove here put my lever at the bottom and then I screw this up again so that when I go into reverse it goes to the same length. I could just sit there and I could change my stitch length to 12 and it would sew at 12 but when I went into reverse it would go all the way up to the largest stitch length and the people at Singer were very clever and they have this oh it's such an ingenious little mechanism as you see it operate in the background so I switch it up to 12 I loosen this knob again and then I slide it until these little plates come into place and knock against the selecting lever here. Screw it into place and then when I want to go into reverse I push it up and you can see it's knocking against this plate here so it goes up to the same length stitch as it's set to here. It's ingenious and it's clever and you just need to remember to do it when you change your stitch length. Now the other thing you can note is that the lever is just sitting here in reverse and what we're used to on modern machines is a sort of sprung lever so you push it into reverse and when you let go it'll go back to forward. Obviously this doesn't happen here so one thing you'll need to get used to is pushing your lever up to reverse to anchor in your stitches and then pushing it back down to go forward again. It's just a little change and it's really nice when you actually go back to a more modern machine and you don't have to do that anymore. And now I will take you through basic threading of the machine. It's pretty simple. I will just warn you that you can miss some loops and it will still sew but the tension will not be that great and it won't pull out easily when you're needing to obviously remove the seam you've just sewn. So be careful to hook up all of the loops. Now obviously we start by plonking our cotton on the spool. Plonking, technical term. And then we come to this first hook here on the front. And then we are looping around the tension disc, so make sure it's clicked in. And then you have to get it behind this little wiry flippy business, again with the technical terms. And I've seen it suggested that you hold on to the thread so it's not pulling through at this point, and that gives you uh, a sort of resistance there. And if you pull it up, it will just loop through that little clicky thing there. Again, technical term, clicky thing. And then we come up to this hole, which on some machines you have a nice little groove coming through in modern times, but you've got to put it through the hole on these older machines. And then you loop through to these little loops here. Now they look like they're solid, but there is actually a small gap on the right hand side. So you just sort of clip it in on the right hand side. And I believe this is one of the loops I missed when I first sewed probably with this. And I believe I missed the little one underneath here as well so don't follow my example on that follow this example so once you've gone through that deceptively enclosed but not actually enclosed loop there's another little hook below it and then again you have to come around to this loop and you can see it's taken the thread to the right hand side of the needle 
which in my experience of my two old singers that I have uh, is usually a hint of which way you have to thread the needle and it does go right to left. We will just have a look at how the bobbin goes in as well and you will just see it's pretty similar to modern machines so there's not much to remember except things like the, the lever that has to be pushed back down if you want to go forwards again. So here we have a bit of close-up of a little bit of fluff in my bobbin case. I will clean that out ignore that <laughs> but I also love the plate that you have here it has all of the eighths of an inch and it also has the points where you sew to and want to you need to turn to get to a particular one which I have used already with the one garment I've sewed on it and I already love it I also love that it has this huge space where you can put biscuits or things that you're eating which yes I have done um, <laughs> but I've also put pins there so it's handy in that way as well we have our bobbin here and it's a bit empty and that is good news for me because it wasn't sewing quite as well on the last thing I did which was the hem of my skirt and I was hoping it was because it was towards the end of the bobbin and I believe it was but what we want to do is have the the thread heading in a clockwise direction so looping around the bottom towards the top and you just drop it in and you loop it around this first, there's a first little sort of groove and you just click it in and then it goes over the next little groove after it and you see it's pulling nicely and you just loop it out close your plate and you are ready to pick up the thread and pull it And then you have your handy little whatever it is that you have to hand to pull out your thread. And normally, obviously, I'm doing this from the front so I can see it. But there you go. You have your bobbin thread up and your top thread threaded. And you are ready to sew. It is just that easy. And it is really enjoyable sewing with old machines. And this just gives you an example of the stitches. You can see they're just so nice and even. Lovely stuff and the underside. It's beautiful. It's really easy to see white stitches on white fabric, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. And that's my stitch setting at 10, which I find is just perfect. It's just very solid and very nice to go with. And that is my introduction to Nellie, my 201P. She is a lovely machine. She's been looked after so well. One of my, one of my favorite things about her is that her light still works because I can't say that about my Benina. They glow blue very quickly. I'm used to sewing in the dark. It is very nice to be able to click on a light. And that will also eliminate your plate of biscuits that you have sitting here while you're sewing because I'm classy that way. So I hope you enjoyed being introduced to Nelly, my Singer 201P. She really is a lovely machine. And I'm looking forward to choosing a project to sew with her and take you along with me on the journey. So you can see it's really quite easy to sew with a sewing machine from the 1950s. You don't even need zigzag, just invest in pinking shears and you don't have to worry about finishing your seams. Pinking shears, so quick, it's amazing. But I will be sharing all of my tips with you and taking you along with me on a little journey at some point soon once I decide on a project. Probably something simple like a skirt because there aren't too many fiddly lines and you do need to get used to the foot pedal, I haven't introduced you to that yet. Uh, they can be challenging but um, it's all part of the experience. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And a big hello and thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm almost at 500, which means I have to think up of some giveaway to share with you all. And that will be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you're having a lot of fun sewing and knitting and just enjoying creating things because it's a fabulous way to spend your life. And I'll catch up with you again soon. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>